today's Thomas Perry LLC webinar, Dancing with Disruption, Dealing with Strategy in Times of Crisis. I'm Tom Perry. Uh, I'm a Seattle area Agile Transformation Consultant and Coach. I'm author of the Little Book of Impediments, founder of Agile Management Northwest, and uh, General Sherpa, builder, innovator, and creator. So welcome today. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to do a little overview of disruption and how the disruption model works. We'll talk about creating the right environment, seeing multiple perspectives, some of the techniques we use for managing strategy, and how we can apply it to disruption in general. So to begin with, you know, disruption has been something that has been uh, very prevalent, I think, for all of us these days. And you see it in the disruption ad uh, adoption curve that we've often talked about with our customers when we talk about how disruption tends to work these days. It's very sudden uh, and it's very overwhelming. Of course, I might as well just change this diagram right now uh, because it turns out that it's not just sales that is important to talk about when we talk about disruption. Disruption certainly can apply to sales, but it turns out that disruption can affect a business a variety of different ways, for instance, pandemics. And when you stop and think about this, what you see is that there are many types of disruption. There can be kinds of economic disruption, product disruption, ecosystem disruption, social disruption, and I'm sure there are other categories we could easily come up with. For each of these different kinds of disruption, you may find that there are very uh, specific ways that they could uh, come about. It could be due to supply chain disruption, for example, uh, trade wars, stock market crashes. Uh, when it comes to product, it could be related to innovation on the part of your competitors. Uh, commoditization of your products, uh, lowered transaction costs, all of these things are specific ways that disruption can affect you. So um, when we look at these things, we can see that the, the product and technical disruption is probably one that we're all very familiar with and closest to. Uh, so we're used to new technologies coming along, we're used to uh, radically improved new products hitting the market, uh, things like the iPhone, for example, that had uh, a disruptive impact across entire categories of products. Of course, politics can also play a very disruptive role, and these days that seems to be more true than ever. And economics, uh, I know that in, within the last 20 years, I have seen two or three different radical economic downturns that have impacted uh, all of business within the U.S. and around the world. And then there's ecological impacts, and that's things like pandemics, disease, changes to ecosystems, global warming, those sorts of things all have their own disruptive impacts on us and our lives, and there are others. So. With all of this, uh, one of the things that we need to consider is if we are going to try and approach the idea of challenging strategy, of coming up with new strategy, we have to create an environment where we can consider ideas freely. And that's very challenging. Uh, Isaac Asimov wrote an article many years ago about how hard it was to get people together to share ideas with one another. And it turns out that ideas are pretty sensitive things, just like people, and it is hard to bring people together to share those things because so often those ideas are wrong or reflect incorrect assumptions, and they expose us when that happens. And so that's not something that people do easily. So you need to create a safe environment. There are a couple of criteria I might apply in those situations, number one, uh, a small audience. So trying to bring together a group of people, a large group, it is much, much more difficult to, to 
innovate, come up with new ideas, come up with new strategies in a large group than it is in a small group. In fact, oftentimes I'll have people start off individually in isolation, uh, which is where they're probably the safest, to come up with ideas before asking them to come together in very small groups like pairs or triads and gradually increasing it as we select ideas that we feel increasingly confident about then we can share them in larger and larger groups but initially that 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 ground that we're that 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 environment we're trying to create is very very sensitive and so we need to make sure that we keep that group as small and as safe as possible so creating the right environment is important if you cannot have a good starting set of ideas then it's going to be very difficult to come up with good strategy based on the unsound ideas it also requires that we're looking at multiple perspectives we need to be able to hold multiple ideas in mind at once and sometimes those ideas actually need to be contrasting or competing with each other and so we need to be able to hold multiple perspectives in mind. That means that we need to consciously force ourselves to not dispose or go after just one side or the other of an idea, but rather hold them together artificially for a while and let them combine and see how they interact. And there's some techniques we can use to do that. The process really starts off with gathering ideas, gathering the different sorts of ideas we want to work with, recombining them, selecting them, and then refining them. So it's kind of a four-stage process. Some of the techniques we use to do that, brain writing is one, where everyone writes down a single idea on a card, you pass it to the person to your right when you're done, and that person then adds anything they want to the card and you pass it on and you continue this activity for about 10 minutes and these cards gradually accrete all of these varying different kinds of ideas each inspired by the person previous to them. Another example of recombination and refinement is to use things like the fearless journey. So the fearless journey is actually a game you can play and you can take your ideas and use the fearless journey, working through the fearless journey, to explore all of the things that might get in the way of the idea or the strategy, and then work through how you will address each of those impediments. And so by work using this game, we can actually sort of set up hypothetical scenarios where we work through challenges that we think are going to come up in advance try them out, come up with new ideas, and you do it in a game setting that's collaborative, fun, enjoyable by the whole group. So it's using tools like these that help us make the activity of ideation and strategy much, much more engaging and much, much more realistic. Of course, as we're doing this, what we need to do is really be looking at the longer term picture, which is that disruption is going to be a constant for us. Things like the pandemic are going to be occurring over and over again. So we need to be prepared. We need to have multiple strategies in our hip pocket. We need to be flexible and we need to be constantly engaging in this kind of iterative ideation over and over again, getting good at this, getting fluent at coming up with new ideas because now more than ever we're going to be required to come up with those ideas as these challenges come at us faster and faster. So if you typically look at the annual planning process you'll see that it's usually done once a year. There are multiple sets of ideas that go down to a group. That group comes up with some sort of guaranteed winner of a strategy uh, and then we're going to take that strategy and we're going to announce it uh, out to another group and then they're going to take it up to another group and so in your typical organization this goes up to the mucky mucks up top the mucky mucks up top break it all down into divisions and departments and then they have a strategy and that strategy then goes back down to the people who helped to come up with the strategy and then it goes back down 
to implementing by the people on the teams, and then you explain it to the people on the teams who are wondering, what was this thing? What is this thing? And long term, it's a very elaborate process in most organizations, overly elaborate, and the ideas get lost in the process, and you have a strategy that seems to have no attachment to where it began when you announce it and share it with the rest of the organization. This can take upwards of three or four months or even longer. I've seen it take upwards of a year. Timelines like this for strategy are way too long and in today's markets are totally useless. Um, so the system really ends up with something that is multiple strategies with huge lead time. The cycles are wasted on revisions, red lines, delays, the sea level decision making is completely opaque. There's no meaningful relationship between what's proposed and what you get for a result. And there's low ownership of the outcomes. It's out of date inside of three months. And it's absolutely unresponsive to market shifts. What we need to be doing is responding faster than the challenges that are coming at us. And this is related to uh, a law of cybernetics called Ashby's Law, which is the variety of challenge must be met with equal variety in response. And that is to say that our environment, the business environment, is going to throw a variety of challenges at us and we need to have an equal number or greater number of responses. And that is required in order for us to survive in the business market. And if we can't do that, if the market throws more challenges than we can provide responses, we will not survive as a business. So we need to be prepared. There's a lot that we need to have. We need to have multiple options. One of the things that we can do is use, I like a strategy called Wardley mapping. And the nice thing about Wardley mapping is it's a visualization of ideas and how they relate to each other and how we think they're going to evolve over time. This provides a sort of a map of how our strategy might be applied over time. You can map things from visible to invisible and according to how they fit within the business cycle. Maybe they're completely original and they're a genesis of a new idea or perhaps they've been completely commoditized and they're a well understood idea that is well articulated in the marketplace. You can use Wardley mapping to visualize the relationship of all of your ideas and make the strategy clear and start to have much clearer conversations about where the organization needs to go. So I'm a big fan of using Wardley mapping. And you need to be flexible. There are going to be changes. So even when you come up with the best possible strategy, you'll find that oftentimes it needs to change and quickly. When I'm engaged with folks, helping them apply their strategy, I like to use a structured approach, usually an initial consultation, an idea generation workshop. We'll do some collection and visualization and then the review and refinement. The initial consultation is really just an introductory session to get to know more about you and your needs, uh, understand your goals, uncover why you're trying to accomplish what it is you're after, and uh, uh, basically come up with the guidelines for your willingness to change and how we'll move forward. An innovation workshop is next and in this workshop we'll use techniques derived from brain science to help you and your team explore those creative possibilities. And then we'll engage in collection and visualization using tools like a lean canvas, idea boards, mind mapping and other tools and followed finally with review and refinement where we will do individual coaching and team coaching as needed. If you're interested in learning more about disruption, I would recommend uh, the book Big Bang Disruption by Larry Downs and Paul Nunes. Uh, it is a great reference to a lot of these ideas. And if you're interested in more services like uh, these, uh, you can see workshops and services uh, in business innovation, product innovation, career innovation, uh, and you can go to thomasperryllc.com 
and uh, find out more, sign up for services there. Uh, and you'll also find this content and more content like it up on my YouTube channel uh, as well as on my blog. So if you're a business, I want to help you diversify and thrive in these challenging times. And if you're a coach, I want to work with you to build new connections and help others thrive. And if you're unemployed, I want to help you find a new way of working. So let's build something great. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time.